I hear opinions about my face, my walk, my body every single day. And, you know, it's a lot of work to overcome that. But I think I can only come out of this stronger. There's no other option for me. <laughs> I've been a beauty pageant fan for as long as I could remember. I remember as a kid, I would watch and stay up late. Sometimes if it's on a school night, I'd stay up late on a school night just to watch a pageant. For me, some of the most influential Filipino queens especially would probably be Miss Miriam Kiambao because I, I didn't watch her pageant during that year because I was still very young. But I remember how my teachers would always talk about her and how they admired her. So she was just like the epitome of a beauty queen for me growing up. And then of course, in the recent years, we've had uh, Pia and Catriona who were just so tenacious in their campaign to be a Miss Universe. So I, I love their fighting spirit. More than the height requirement, it's also probably my age. <laughs> you know, I am not getting any younger. I have very, very limited time to fulfill this dream. But the thing is with me, when I see an opportunity and I know it's right there in front of me, I don't really like to think twice because we can only do so much in this lifetime, so why not? I mean, I've been dreaming about this for as long as I can remember. I've always, you know, walked around my house wearing heels, <laughs> pretending that I was a beauty queen. And now that I can actually do it in real life, why wouldn't I? So it's really that and the support around me. Nobody really told me within my social circle, like my, my support system, nobody really told me that I was too ambitious or that I was dreaming too hard so i think that really helped me just feel confident in sending my application form it really started with wishing i had a role model to look up to when i was younger i think growing up the person that i can remember the most is bianca gonzalez like seeing her on the cover of magazines being so vocal about being a proud morena that really impacted me. I keep wondering, what if we had more Biancas in the world? What if we saw Bianca in different areas and not just showbiz? Because Bianca was somebody I saw on TV. But what if I saw another person like her on stage at Miss Universe? What if I saw somebody else who was, I don't know, in corporate who represented me? I feel like representation in all areas is just very important because it shows us, especially as kids, it shows us what we are capable of. And we, if we see ourselves in successful people and people who are unapologetic and confident, then it really opens up the world of possibilities for us. It's been such a crazy transition for me, especially since it's only been a couple of months. Actually, it's been a month since I started the pageant journey. And for me, the biggest adjustment would probably be all the glam that we do in pageantry. I'm really not used to that. If you see any of my past videos, most of them minimal makeup, most of them are just me talking so now that I have to do photo shoots now that I have to you know be a little more glamorous than usual that's definitely a big change but I think more than that I, I feel like I'm becoming more aware of my platform and the responsibility that comes with that there are definitely a lot more eyes watching so I'm really trying to reevaluate okay what are my priorities? What, what should I be talking about? What message should I be putting out? And I, I guess that would be the biggest difference moving forward from here. So for my pageant training, I've been doing a lot of pasarela training, of course. That's one of the things that I've been trying to catch up on. I'm training with Kagandahang Flores. They welcomed me after I got into the top 100. At that point, I had no idea whatsoever about pageant training. I didn't know who to talk to or who to call. But I was very lucky because my friend who was Miss Jensen last year, MJ, she connected me with Peter Rogel of Caganang Flores and then they helped me out with my, my walk. 
And more than that, I think the interviews have definitely been helping me, especially with uh, polishing my, I don't know, communication skills. It's been a while since I've been in front of people, especially since we've been holed up indoors since the last year or so. So yeah, I've been trying to uh, figure out all the different areas of, of pageantry, a lot of photo shoots. And I'm taking it one step at a time. An advantage I have would probably be just being exposed to uh, this kind of work. I mean, I tell stories for a living. I document. I speak for a living. And that experience has definitely helped me because I, I think more than just the voting part, it also has helped me solidify my message and I think I understand why I'm here a little better now, more than I did probably if, if I joined in 2015. Without the experience as a content creator, I don't think I would be as confident. I don't think I would be as certain with my communication skills, perhaps. Definitely, it's a totally different ballgame. Pageantry is not the same as YouTube, it's not the same as TikTok, but the skills I've learned along the way, I think they're going to help me too. I think it would be trying something new so publicly. It's really difficult because Miss Universe Philippines is a prestigious pageant and a lot of people are watching it or following it and to be in the middle of it, especially as a newbie, it's quite difficult because I hear opinions about my face, my walk, my body every single day and you know, it's a lot of work to overcome that. But I think I can only come out of this stronger. There's no other option for me. <laughs> I think it's great because, first of all, the essence of pageants, it's really in how impactful they are. It's about the influence of pageants. It's how many people they reach. And if we remove the barriers that limit the kind of beauty that is represented on stage, then more of the next generation will be represented. More bodies, more heights, more colors. And I think that's beautiful because we are no longer telling like just a certain look that they're beautiful, but we're opening it up to others as well. And I think just knowing that you belong up there is, is good enough. <laughs> I would say surround yourself with people who support you, who believe in you and believe in your potential. Because I think for me, the reason I was able to break out of those self-limiting beliefs is that I have friends who never told me that I wasn't good enough or that I was dreaming too high. My family, they never really told me that I was too ambitious and I think that kind of support or that kind of belief just made me think outside of the box that I was put in. Mm -hmm.